Hey, what's up everybody? Rich Gaming Guy here. Today I'm gonna show you guys around the Lenovo Think Center M73 PC. This particular PC has an Intel Core i5 processor, 3.2 gigahertz and eight gigabyte RAM. So we're going to dive into this today, take a full tour of what this PC offers externally. Then we're going to boot it up directly into Bodicera and we're going to test out a bunch of retro video game collections and games so we know exactly what the performance is like when doing retro video game emulation on it. So let's dive into it, take a quick look at what this offers externally and then jump into some gaming. All right, so here is our Lenovo Think Center M73 Core i5-4570. PC with 3.2 gigahertz and eight gigabyte RAM. So this is going to get us into a bunch of retro video game collections today, but I wanna first walk through what this has to offer externally for us. So here in the top right corner is our power button. That's what we're going to use to power the PC on. Here we have a disk drive. We're not gonna be using that today for emulation purposes, but it's certainly nice to have if we ever wanted to put a Windows hard drive in here or have the option to boot into Windows uh, separate from what we're using as our emulation platform. Here's our disk drive with the DVD uh, feature there. We also have the eject button right here. We have two regular USB connections in the front, which is nice for connecting wired controllers, mouse um, or keyboard whatever you need to connect to your PC, whether you're using Bodicera or another emulation platform, or if you're just using a regular operating system. Here we have a mic port, as well as our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Down here is where you can actually get the built-in speaker to output your audio. You can set that within Bodicera if you want to, or whatever emulation platform you plan to use on here. Um, but what I'm actually going to do that actually I have tested, it does work really well but it's kind of a pain to adjust volumes on here, especially within Bodicera. You're not able to do it easily within games, so you have to come out to the menu and adjust it there. It's not super user-friendly, it's not convenient. So what I actually recommend doing is using the display port on the back side, and we're gonna get into that. I'm gonna flip this around right now, show you guys what this PC has to offer for connections on the back side. All right, so here is the back side of our PC. Up here is where we would plug in our power supply cable. We have some additional connections here, none of which we're really going to use for Bodicera today. But what I wanna highlight is we have four USB connections on the back, two are USB 3, two are USB 2. And then we also have VGA, which is a great way to connect to old school monitors. It gives you an additional option there. Uh, I don't recommend it if you're trying to connect to a modern day TV, because it's not going to work without adapters and you're not able to actually transmit the audio through there, only the video. So over here we have a display port, which is kind of an older way of connecting to monitors or TVs, but what you can use this for is you can get a display port to regular HDMI cable, and this works exactly like a regular HDMI output would. You're able to plug directly into that, plug it directly to your monitor or TV, and it's going to transmit video and audio. So again, exactly the same functionality of an HDMI cable. I know this turns off a lot of people because it's not necessarily what we would do modern day for connecting a PC to a TV, but it works exactly the same way. And the fact that we're able to get audio and video on there is an absolute home run. So that's what I'm using today. Display port, using the display port to HDMI cable directly to my TV. So audio and video come out in the same spot. Certainly could use the audio um, in the front there that comes directly out of the PC, but I want everything to just be coming out together and have that same sort of modern day setup that we typically have with PCs or consoles. So we're going to power this on, boot it up directly into Bodicera, dive into a bunch of different games and game collections and test out the performance.
ones left? No. All right, so we jumped in here. We took a closer look at what this PC offers for us externally in terms of connections, ports, and all that. We also dove into Botticera, tested out a bunch of retro video games and a bunch of different collections. And I found that the overall performance here for retro video game emulation is exceptional. We do have some shortcomings in PS2. I honestly didn't think PS2 was even going to boot up with this particular PC when going through the specs. So I was impressed that a lot of games do boot up. They're just really, really slow, really laggy. Uh, it's not a good experience for PS2 on here, but everything else up to PS2 is really good. GameCube, perfect. N64, I didn't show N64 in the demos here, but N64 runs perfectly. No issues whatsoever. We have more than enough power to get into all of our N64 games without issue. Uh, Dreamcast is great. Sega Saturn is great on here. GameCube, again, great. Uh, PlayStation 1, perfect, no issues there at all. We even got into Xbox on here. And Xbox is a tricky collection to get into too. Emulation on there is not perfect. Um, you're not able to get into all of the games for Xbox by any means, but you're able to get into a whole lot of games. I jumped into Amp 2 for you guys today. No issues there, no delays, no lags, no stutters, no indication of any sort of shortcomings whatsoever with the performance on this PC. We also jumped into Nintendo Wii, and I didn't put a ton of different videos on here for Nintendo Wii, but I dove into one that I thought would be a good indication of what the performance is like, and that was the light gun game House of the Dead 3. And that's a game that you're tracking on screen. You're using the dolphin, the Mayflash Dolphin Bar through USB connection, and I'm using that with an original Wii remote uh, inside of a gun casing. So you have a lot going on with something with a setup like that. No issues, no stutters, no um, 
delays in tracking on screen or anything like that. So that is great. That's a good indication that everything in this PC is up to par with what we're trying to get into here. So we do have those shortcomings again, PS2, certainly if PS2 doesn't work, we don't even have to consider what PS3 would be like. I, you would not even get a game to open up for PS3 on this PC. So if you're looking for those earlier collections all the way up through GameCube, we this is a great PC option for you. They're not super expensive right now. If you were to get these secondhand, you can get them on eBay, you can get them. Sometimes they're on Amazon, kind of depends on what inventory is available. Um, if they're available on Amazon, though, I'll put a link in the description of this video. I'll also put an eBay link for you guys to check out what is available on there. eBay is a great place to get deals. The only downside is this PC, it's not super small and compact. It's made, It's got a metal um, casing to it, so it does weigh a good amount. If you have to ship that, you're going to have to pay probably at least, I would say, 25 bucks to ship these unless you have somebody that's offering free shipping. So that's something to consider when buying these online. Uh, if you could try to pick one up locally, you can certainly get lucky. Pawn shops um, offer up locally. Um, what else? Craigslist, uh, Goodwill, Salvation Army, places like that. If you live near a uh, recycling center for PCs, certainly a great option there. A lot of times you could find perfectly functional PCs just without a hard drive. In this case, that, there's no issue with that because you're putting in a new hard drive in most cases anyways for emulation gaming. So... That is pretty much everything that I have to say about this PC, but really happy with the performance. I got this one extremely cheap. Uh, I paid 30 bucks for it. So considering 30 bucks and then I put a four TV hard drive in, I think that was like 65, 70 bucks right there. So all in all, uh, under a hundred bucks on this whole build with thousands and thousands of retro video games at my fingertips on here through Botticera. So awesome option if you're looking for a budget-friendly option for PC gaming. Just obviously, it's not going to be able to handle anything beyond PS2. So that's going to do it for today, though. If you guys enjoyed this video, you found this helpful, uh, the information helped you in some way, smash that thumbs up button on the video for me. It's a huge help here on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button as well so you can stay in the loop for all future videos that I do on here. I'm doing a lot of videos highlighting budget-friendly PC options for retro video game emulation because we're in a time where everything is super expensive. Everybody's trying to get mini PCs or uh, Raspberry Pis that are going for an obscene fortune these days. You don't have to go that route. You can get an older PC like these with sufficient power that are going to get you into a lot of retro video game collections. And, and get you into them well too, which is awesome. So that's going to do it for today though. Thank you guys so much for the support. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.